this is the image we're starting with. Uh, I have to make things go a little faster. I have already gone in and done a color correction and adjusted shadow and highlight. So this is the image that we're going to start with. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background and then I'm going to go on up and I'm going to go to Topaz Simplify. Now I don't use a lot of what's in here but what I use works very well for me. I just click on the top one here. Now you see the tree how it's all blocked up. I move this slider down until I see that open up. And that's how I decide how much detail I want to maintain. Now, I want to remove small detail and weak detail, but I want to boost, I want to maintain as much detail as possible. Now, I'm going to click OK, and that's all I do in Simplify. And we can see the difference. This will give me a much more painterly looking image because there's a lot less fine detail which a painter wouldn't put into the image. Now, I'm going to make a decision at this point. I can either go continue to have it look unpainterly like this, or I can go for a more painterly effect. And I want to do this particular tutorial on how to achieve the painterly effect. So I'm going to duplicate this again, and we're going to go on up, and we're going to go down, and we're going to go into Impressions. Now we have a, a lot of choices here, and uh, the, the ones I find I like the most are Colored Pencil, Intaglio, and Watercolor, which is all the way at the bottom. In this particular case, we're going to use this one. Now when it opens up, I would never use it in this in this configuration. I always go in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the brush size as small as I can and still have it look painterly. And I usually get down to this type brush 2 and push this quite a ways down. And when you start to see it open up, then you know you're getting down where you want to be. We want to close those up, we just adjust our stroke length and our stroke width. And I'm going to go down a little bit more. Now you don't have to worry about getting all of these out because you can just go all the way to the bottom and click on solid here in background and then it picks up the background from your original image so that it works a little bit better. I'm going to go up. The next thing I usually work on is, is, is contrast, the lighting, brightness and contrast. So I'm going to just move it up to see what it does. Well, it brings it up quite a bit. But I'm losing a lot of detail in these areas, so I'm going to uh, pull the contrast down some. Pull the brightness back down. See, now we've picked up the detail in this area. I'm just going to play with this. And then I'm going to darken the edges a little bit by using the vignette. Then I can address the transparency on that right here. And that's about where I want it to be, and I'm going to say OK. Now this looks pretty good, um, but what I want to do is I want to I want to get more texture into it, and I want to have it look a little bit more crisper. The way I've discovered that I like doing this for myself is I'm going to now make a black and white copy of this. So I'm going to go back up to Filter, I'm going to go to Nix, go to FX Pro 2, and the reason I like this particular piece of software is I can make a black and white in Photoshop just fine, but 
this allows me to see a lot of choices very quickly. I can click on these and very quickly see different effects. And what I want to look for is a fairly contrasty effect. So I like this one. That's the one I think I'm going to go for. But you can see there's a lot more and you can get down like this one might work too. But we want something you don't want something like this. You want something that has some contrast to it. But you don't want it to be too dark. So I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to open the shadows up just a tad. There we go. I'm going to play with a soft contrast here a little bit. Yeah, about like that. I'm going to give it a little bit more structure. Now, I usually don't fuss with the rest of this. The next thing I work on is I get down and I want to I want to add a toned color to it. And uh, this a lot of this depends on if you have a winter scene, you might want to use blue. This is a warmer scene, so I'm going to use on the warmer end of the spectrum here. And uh, here I'm going to go with 19. And then we just say, OK. Here's my black and white. Now I'm going to move the color image above the black and white image. And then I'm going to go on up here to the blending modes and I'm going to go down to color. And you can see how that's really crisp this up and, and given the shadows a lot more contrast, but I haven't lost any detail. And that's the thing I like about this is it allows me to, to, to snap the contrast up and to increase the texture in the image without losing detail in the shadow or in the highlights. I can now go up and change the opacity and get it exactly where I want it. And I not only can do this, I can set this, then I can click on the color, the black and white image if I want to, and I can change the opacity of that. So it gives me a way of adjusting the image in several different ways to come up with the end result that I want by adjusting the opacity on these three different layers. Now when you get it the way you want it to be, if you hold down the Option key, go on over to this menu right here, and get down to Merge Visible, it will copy all of these and put a copy on the top of the stack. So this is the effect of all of those. So I can shut these all off now and it doesn't have any effect. The nice thing about this is you can do this, and then you can say, okay, this is what I ended up with, and this is what I started with. Now, I would still spend a lot of time working on this image. It's nowhere near done, but I wanted to have you just see the end result of the effect of using these three things together, simplify, impressions, and FX. So, there it is.